Hey, climbing friends, welcome back to another one of our weekly episodes. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Simo rappelling. Unfortunately, we had an accident in the climbing community. We lost a great climber, Brad Gobright, and fortunately had his accident while Simo rappelling. So in his honor, I'm going to show you how to, it can be done safely and uh, can prevent others from having the same accident. So let's roll the intro and let's get started. Okay, welcome back. So let's just get started. We'll set up an anchor. Um, I don't have a climbing partner with me today, so I'll just be doing this with a Frodo Baggins here. I'll just be using my bag. So let's just go ahead and uh, set up a quick anchor. So why would you want to Simon rappel in the first place? Well, it may be a little bit quicker because you both get down at the same time, but also let's say you're working out a route and uh, you want to give the person beta instead of yelling, shouting down, hey, put your hand there, put your foot down there, whatever. You guys could both go down, take a look at the route, check it out, talk about it. So it has that benefit aspect to it. So let's just add a lock and beaner here. Okay, it's a quick little mark markup setup. So um, let's, right now I'm floating in the air and the back's floating in the air. So let's hop into this anchor here. We'll clip in. Just like that. We'll say these are the belay, the uh, rappel station loops or whatever that are up here. We're both clipped in. We're gonna pretend these are the rappel link uh, rings here. Okay, so rope manufacturers make ropes in two tones now. If you don't have one, you should definitely get one. And what this tells you is that both lengths are equal. So because half the rope length has a pattern, one pattern on it, and the other has another pattern. And once you get to the point where both patterns meet, you know that that's the middle and both lengths are equal. And that's really important in uh, repelling in general because you wanna make sure that both lengths are equal and you're not, one side's not too short, which unfortunately is what happened in this incident is uh, he thought it was a little bit longer and it wasn't. So you always wanna repel about the middle. Now it doesn't have to be exactly the middle because if you repelled in the same exact spot all the time, you end up putting a dead spot in the rope. So if it's off by a little bit, that's not too bad, just not way off, like like 10 feet off or something like 20 feet off, so something like that. So, okay, so that's that's step number one. Step number two is, and most importantly, is you want end knots in the end of your rope. And I have an episode on end knots. Very important to have an end knot or to be tied into the end if you're worried about your end knot getting stuck in a rock or something like that. At least be tied into the end. That way you can't repel off the end, which unfortunately is exactly what happened. He thought the line was a little bit long of a repel and uh, there was no end knot, so he repelled off the end. So make sure you have a end knot in your system, get the system closed off, so you can't, if a catastrophe happens, you at least won't fall off the end of your rope. Okay, so there's that. So now we're gonna get into the system. I'll get an ATC, I'll put that on a gree gree to show you a little bit of diversity. So let's put them on a gree gree. On, uh, I'll put them on this end here. Clip them in. Okay, so they're on the gree gree, and I'll get an ATC. Now, if you're using ATC, you want to back it up because if you let go of ATC, it doesn't have a braking system like a gree gree does. So you want to use a Prusik or something like that to stop it. So let's just, I'll show you how you do that. And the way, there's two ways to do it. I've seen people use a small Prusik. So if this is clipped in here, you have a smaller Prusik attached to a leg loop, attached to here, keep it really tight and tidy. Because if it's not, if these don't have a distance, um, and I'll show you how to extend it, if they, you don't keep this a distance from the Prusik, they'll end up touching and then it'll nullify the Prusik, Prusik won't even work. So they need to be able to keep a good distance from each other. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'll extend my ATC up higher. So I'll just grab a quick little sling for demonstration. Put that like that, clip in. I'll use this beaner. Now if you're using a screw gate beaner, and you clip in with that screw gate locking beaner. It's important to keep the screw gate in the bottom because, well, what they say is you screw down so you don't screw up. So that prevents gravity from uh, screwing it down, from it jostling around. So it's, it's good. It's good practice to keep it down, facing down like that. Okay. So now that this is extended up, we can now add our Prusik to our loop harness loop here. So let me just grab something here. I have episodes of making Prusiks. I can check down on my site, my channel. So let's just add three loops here. 
Feed it around. Make sure it's nice and tidy. You can take your time. I'm just kind of rushing because this is a video. But uh, when you do this, you want to take your time, double check everything. It's not a race. And usually that's how accidents happen is they, everything, everything's a rush. So, okay, let's grab another locker and clip that in here. Just like that. And now what this allows me to do is if this gets pulled up, it's going to end up grabbing. And you always should check it, make sure everything works. Yeah, see so it grabs here down the Prusik so it can't fly through there. So that's what that does there. A little complicated, but I think you think I broke it down pretty simply. So now let's get weighted onto this rope. And there's one more other thing we gotta do before we repel, but let's just get weighted here. So let's engage the Grigri. Okay, let's pull in the slack here. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to engage this Grigri and pull up the slack. Let's go this way. Keep this tidy. Let's do it this way. Okay. Eventually. Why did I put so much weight in this bag? Okay, anyway, there we go. So now we're weighted off of this. Now before we repel, they look at my harness, I look at their harness, we have a conversation about what we're gonna do. And now we realize, you know what? It's really important that we're tied in together because if this person yanks on this real hard, they could go flying down and cause mayhem in this whole system. So if we clip in, so I'll just throw a girth hitch in here for, just for representation right now. You could do it however you want, clip in. There you go, as so long as you guys are clipped in. So now what this allows, now that we're tied in together, if they were to yank on this and go flying down real fast or and maybe they stood on a ledge and unweighted the rope or right, something like that. I could go flying up, they could go flying down. But since we're clipped in, they'll only go as far as this lanyard will allow. So that's a really important thing to do also. And I think that's about it. Now we can uh, unclip from here. Uh, we had our conversation, a little coffee. And... Uh, uh, tea time, and we seem that everything is good, hunky dory. Now we could both go. Okay, so now I can repel, and they can repel at the same time, and everything's good to go. Uh, come on down, sweetie. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. So that's time we're repelling, and uh, how to do it safely, and not have an accident. If you like that, you like stuff like this, go ahead and like, subscribe. I'll Try to make a video every week. So uh, that's about it. Josh Perry climbing out of here. See you guys next week. Later. <clears throat> Am I still clipped into that bag? Oh, wow. Safety. See? See what that lanyard does? Keeps us safe.